In Lesson 33, we'll be learning about products of prime factors and a little bit more about word problems. Well, first, let's talk about products of prime factors. Remember, prime numbers, those are numbers that are div divisible by themselves and one only, such as 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on. And actually, 1 is not considered a prime number. So these numbers, they are only divisible by themselves and by 1. And so that means their only factors are themselves and 1. Like for 2, is 2 times 1. Those are the only two factors that we could break 2 into. Now 4, that is not a prime number, but we can break 4 into a pair of prime factors. 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. Remember, factors, those are just numbers that are multiplied by another number. Prime factors would be prime numbers that are multiplied by another prime number. So in this lesson, what they want you to do is they'll give you a number, and they want you to break it into its products of prime factors. For example, look at this problem, 42. Let's break that into a product of prime factors. So what you do is you just try to think of numbers, prime numbers, that that is divisible by, that 42 is divisible by. And a test for divisibility, what you do is, if it's an even number, then you know it's divisible by 2. So we can change this into 2 times 21. Now 21, hopefully you know that's 7 times 3 already, or you can do a divisibility test. Remember, if you add the digits up, if they add up to uh, a factor that's divisible by 3, then you can divide it by 3. 2 and 1, you can add those up to 2 plus 1 is 3, so you know that 3 is going to be a factor of 21, and it is at 7 times 3. So we would break this into 2 times 3 times 7. And those are all prime factors, so that's as far as we would go with that answer. We've broken 42 up into its product of prime factors. Let's do another one, 312. This one will be a little more complicated. Well, we see it's an even number, so we know it's going to be at least divisible by 2. And so we can break that into 2 times 156. And then 156, that's an even number, so we can divide that by 2 as well. And so I just like to do these vertically, and I'll just say 2 times 2 times 78, because that's what 156 is, is 2 times 78. And if I write them vertically, then I can keep up with my factors a little bit easier. Now 78, we have another even number there, and so we'd say 2 times 2 times 2 times 39, because 2 times 39 is 78. Now we have an odd number there at the end, so let's think about this. If we add up the digits 3 and 9, that's 12. 12 is divisible by 3, so 39 is divisible by 3, and that would be 3 times 13. So we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 13. 13 is a prime number, so we're done with that problem. There's our product of prime factors. So to break a number up into its product of prime factors, you just keep dividing it by prime numbers that it's divisible by. Just keep breaking it up, breaking it up until you have a product of prime factors. All of the factors have to be prime numbers, though, for it to be correct. Now, it doesn't matter if you write them in numerical order like I've been doing. You could have 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 13. That doesn't really matter because order doesn't matter in multiplication, right? Most likely, though, in the textbook and the solutions manual, they'll have the numbers written in order, and it'll just help you check your work a little bit quicker to make sure you've done it correctly. Now, part B of this lesson is on word problems. In the Saxon textbook, they say it's statements about unequal quantities. That's the title for that lesson. I don't really like the way they explain how to do these types of word problems. I think the way we did them in the previous lesson, 
I think if we just stick with that format, I think it's a little bit better way to do it. Now, if you get confused on how I'm doing it, you can always read their method, and then you have two methods to compare, and you can pick which one you like better. But I'm going to show you how to do it just the same way that we did the problems in Lesson 32. Look at this problem, and let's just read it left to right, just like we always do on word problems. Read it first, and then we'll go back and look for keywords and see how to make our algebraic equation. Twice the number is 33 less than 85. Find the number. Okay, so twice the number is, that's our equal sign. Is is our equal sign there. And so we say twice the number or 2n. And just like we did in the previous lesson on word problems, I like to just write the algebraic equation from left to right just like I read the words in the English sentence from left to right. So I see twice a number, that's the first thing I read in the English sentence, so I write that down in the algebraic equation. Twice a number is, there's my equal sign, so I put that in, 33 less than 85. Well, now that is a little bit tricky there. All you have to do is just think about 85. What would be 33 less than 85? We'd have to subtract 33. So then we would get... 33 less than 85. So when you see that phrase there, less than, you kind of have to rearrange your algebraic equation compared to your um, English sentence. 33 came first in the English sentence, then 85. And you just switch those in the algebraic equation. So twice the number is 33 less than 85. So let's just go ahead and solve this now. I have 2n is equal to, I just have to do that subtraction now, 85 minus 33. That would be 52. And then I can divide both sides by 2. And so that would just be n equals 26. So there's my missing number or unknown number. Let's do another one. Let's just read that through first. 3 times a number is 25 less than a number. Now, I didn't write find the number at the end of that, but you know what we're doing here. We're trying to find an unknown value, so I don't need to write that down every time. 3 times a number is 25 less than a number. Let's just go ahead and rewrite that, going left to right. I'm going to write the equation above the sentence here. So 3 times a number would be 3n is, there's my equal sign, 25 less than a number. So whenever we see that 25 less than, that means we need to subtract that 25 out. And so we'd have n minus 25. So if the number was 50, 25 less than that number, that would be 25. You just have to think subtraction. When you see that phrase, less than, you just have to think about subtraction there. You're just making whatever comes after that phrase less than. You're making that that much less. You're subtracting that much out of it. So we have our algebraic equation. Now let's go ahead and solve it for n. We need to get the n's on one side, so let's add a negative n to both sides. And so now we have 2n is equal to negative 25. Now we divide both sides by 2 here. And that cancels on the left, and so we end up with a negative 25 over 2. We want to write that as a mixed number, though, and so that would be negative 12 and 1 half. So that's our unknown value there. Let's do one more of these, and let's just read this through. If the sum of a number in 3 is multiplied by 2, the result is 16 greater than the number. Okay, so let's just go back through reading it left to right, looking for keywords, and make our algebraic equation. If the sum, so we know we're doing addition, adding a number and 3, so we have the sum of a number and 3, n plus 3, is multiplied by 2. So that means if that sum is multiplied by 2, so we put parentheses around the sum and multiply it by 2. 
the result is, so there's our equal sign, that word result and the word is, those tell us that there's our equal sign. The result is 16 greater than the number. Okay, so we have 16 greater than, that, that means adding. So 16 plus the number. In the previous two problems, we've had less than, and so we had to do subtraction of that part. If this would have said 16 less than the number, we would have wrote n minus 16, or we would have written n minus 16 there. But it says 16 greater than the number, so we need to add 16 to the number. And so now we can go ahead and solve this. We have a set of parentheses on the left, and unlike terms inside, so we need to use our distributive, prop distributive property first. 2 times n would be 2n, and then plus 3 times 2 is 6. So we have 2n plus 6 is equal to 16 plus n. So we have variables on both sides. We need to combine those together. And then we ought to just go ahead and get our constant on the right as well all at the same time. So let's add a negative n to both sides. And let's add a negative 6 to both sides. We'll do all of that in one line. Those n's cancel. These sixes cancel, and then we end up with 2n minus n, which is just n. I'll write it over to the right side here, and then 16 minus 6 is 10. n equals 10. The main thing in these word problems that's different from the previous ones is that less than and greater than. Less than, that means to subtract out. Greater than means to add that amount on. You can still work these problems just reading them left to right, just like you've done all of your other word problems. And I think that's an important step to do, is to just write them out left to right, just like you've been doing. Do all of your word problems like that from now until you're done with algebra, and that will give you a format and a process, a problem-solving process to help you get through these. That's just such an important part of algebra, is figuring out a good method, a good process, to solve the problems. And that applies to problems in life too. If you develop good thinking skills by doing algebra, you're going to have good thinking and problem solving skills in the things you do in your life as well. Okay, well that's all for lesson 33.